Welcome back to Exotic Car Play Place, everybody. Thanks for coming back. And today we have a real great treat for those do-it-yourselfers out there. Maybe you guys have a BMW E70 X5 like the one behind me here. Well, there comes a time when you drive these cars that they do wear out. So today we're going to share with you how to do a front brake disc pad and sensor replacement on this vehicle. And not only that, we're going to give you the full reset, how to do it yourself, because otherwise you have to take it to the dealer and they will charge you $250 or some other obscene number just to reset your code. So let's get started. So step one, you put the car in park. Step two, activate the park brake. Pop the hood, get ready. And then be sure to use chalks. If you're on a sloped surface, just put a little chalk, something to give it a little extra stability. So next is I use a jack here in the center of the vehicle. There's actually a little jack point. There's the oil engine drain plug. It's straight ahead from that. There's an actual dr jack point here that you can put your jack on. Then I grab a set of jack stands like this. And I lay it under here. And there's this jack block here that comes factory with the jack all rested down onto the stands. Next, I undo the bolts. Okay, so now the wheel is off. Now before we get ahead of ourselves, we wanna access the actual reservoir for topping up the brake fluid because we may have to take some out depending on if it's high because when we compress the calipers, it may erupt out of the top so we also need to relieve some of that pressure so let's do that the reservoir actually is tucked in under here it's not immediately accessible we just have to undo these few little bolts here and then we can remove this shroud and we'll have access to the brake master cylinder and filler okay so i have an eight millimeter allen key head on a ratchet we're going to undo that here start here do one over there Another one right here. And there's another one right down in this corner. And then this should lift out. We have to lift up the rubber, get that kind of out of the road. It's sort of holding things up. Just get that off to the side. Okay, let's get this nasty thing out of here. Give it a little clean while we're in there. Now we've exposed the brake master cylinder. Now you can see the fluid's actually kind of low in here. It's not low, low. It's not too low in the sense of, you know, add, because add is down here and we're still above the add mark, but there's a lot of buffer. So I'm gonna need that when it comes time to actually push the calipers open. So what I'm gonna do is relieve the pressure because when we start pushing on the calipers, we'll need that pressure to go somewhere. So I'm gonna lift that out. Just leave it like this. Now, a caution, word of caution. Did you know brake fluid is very corrosive? So if you get it and you drip it on the side of your car, wash it off thoroughly because it can eat the paint off your car. So be very careful. So next thing is I've got this six millimeter Allen head socket, if you will, male end. And I'm gonna turn that. We have to undo the screw. That's the retaining screw for the disc. I'm gonna back that out. And there's the screw. Don't throw that out. Make sure you keep that to the end. The next thing is we want to pry this bad boy off. Uh, I pried away there and pull this out at the same time. Now you'll see they've got those two little hooks. They go into these little holes. So let's put that to the side. Okay, so next we go around the caliper. And on the back side here, you have these. Oh, I got that plug out, so there's one here, and then there's another one at the top. There we go, we got both of them out. Okay, so next we have a seven millimeter Allen key end, and we're gonna use this to undo the two bolts at the back of the caliper, seven mil, right there. So we're gonna do that. So do the top one first. Get that loose. So get the bottom one now. 
loosen that. It's, got, it's a bit snug, but here we go. Okay, so next I like to get a pry bar or a big screwdriver like this and pry the caliper away now that it's unbolted. There we go. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to get the caliper up out of the way and actually use the pad to compress the cylinder in. But what we don't want to do is kink this. We want to make sure that that sits fairly stable and we don't twist it. We'll set it down on top of the brake disc like that. And then we'll take this off, the old pad which looks like it's quite worn. As you can see, the thickness is getting down there. There's not a lot of life left on that. So next, I like to use a little trick so this thing doesn't fall down. I wrap it around the A-arm here. I use a little duct tape, cheap. Everybody's got a little duct tape in the shop. And I just, I wanna make sure that that caliper does not fall on me while I'm working as well. I, I wanna make sure that it doesn't pinch the line when, uh, when I'm working on this. So I always use a little duct tape it's just enough to hold things. It's not gonna go anywhere. I got the caliper actually hooked up on that cross bolt here at the bottom of the A-arm, and I just got it dangling there now. So it should be okay. So the next thing we do, we wanna use a Torx socket here, and we wanna take off this bracket here. So this is a Torx. You need a female Torx to get that bolt off. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. Okay, so I got the first one out, and now, I'm gonna Get the second one out. Okay, now we spin this out. Got this. We got the two bolts here. What we're going to put is a little anti seize on there later. And now we peel this away. And there we go. And we just want to give that a bit of a cleaning, a light dusting, just to make sure we get some of that crap off of there and we'll get that ready for install as soon as the new pad, the new disc goes on. So now, now we have access to pull this off. Be careful, they're very heavy. So this, as you can see, there's a big lip there now. And so that's a sign, sure sign, that you needed to replace this. It was on its way out. Okay, so I just wanna give this a light clean. Now this is just the hub. Be careful, because brake dust is known to cause cancer. So you don't wanna use compressed air in this area. I just like to do a wet wipe and and then move on that's enough just to clean the hub a little bit okay so we have a brand new disc it's got a zinc protection here to protect it so it doesn't corrode while it's in storage but i like to I keep my fingers off of the disc even though it looks like somebody at the factory manhandled it and there's prints all over it but i'm going to use just the edges and lift that up slide it on so now remember that screw that was the little pilot screw that holds the disc on what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little WD-40, make sure it's greased up a little bit. Right there, I'm going to start to turn that in. Okay, so we just want to put that screw in and we'll snug it in there. It doesn't have to be overly torqued because that's not really what holds the disc on. It's just a pilot screw. That should do the trick. Okay, so I just take a little bit of general purpose grease not very much, a very thin smattering. Do it on the top and the bottom. Just a thin little layer of it. Thin layer that you barely even see. So then the retaining bolts for the bracket, I'm just gonna put a little grease in there just so that it slides in there a little easier. Put on the one. And put it on the other one here as well. So we got some grease on there. Okay, so we slide this in here, line up the bolt, one of the bolts, let's start with the top, get it started. And we get the bottom one started as well. And then we're going to ratchet this in with our Torx. Well, we'll tighten it until we got both of them all the way in. So I'll snug that. This one I'll spin into. Okay. So we snug that down. We've got the top one and we've got the bottom one. We've got them both snug. Now this is the bracket. It's tight. 
you'll notice there's no binding you always want to watch for that that nothing's crooked everything's aligned and I can see that the disc rotates smoothly it's not making contact with either bracket side half okay Go. Go. Yeah. Okay, so I with this duct tape, I'm just going to give it a quick cut. Undo that. Pull the caliper away. Put that in the garbage. Now, I have to squeeze the caliper. Now, as you can see, this is fully inserted because the brake's got a lot of wear on it. So what we're going to do is we have to pull that back. Okay, so I put a C-clamp on there. It's a bit awkward, but once you get it snugged up, it's fine. Snug, snug. And now, I just start clamping and turning it. So I open the caliper. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. It's bottomed out, but barely. Now, I can take the old pad off, throw that in the trash. As you can see, one of these halves has these brackets on the back and the other one does not. Take note, obviously this one here has to fit into this hole here within the pot. Okay, now we got that clipped into the caliper. We've got that pushed back. Instead of putting this in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it into here first on the outside edge of this. And then we're gonna slide the caliper over top. All right, so there we go. That was an easy peasy deal. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna snug up the bolts on the back of the caliper to the cage or to the bracket. So we're gonna, here's the top one. We're gonna start snugging that in there. All right, so we'll get this to snug down. All right, and the bottom one I just did as well. Okay, so we got these little plugs. Let's put those back in here. That one, and then we have one at the top as well. Put him in there. It's just to protect the backs of the heads of the bolts. There. Okay, so next we got this bracket. Make sure we put it on the right way. Remember, we got those two clips. They have to go in these holes. Okay, so this has to be on the outside of this bracket. So we want to put it there. We don't want it over here. It's got to be over here. And these, we want to get that started in that hole. And this hole up here, it all has to be snugged. This, we want to bring back over there. There we go. Now what that does is it keeps it all Snug, just snug enough, it's spring-loaded so that everything stays snug together so you don't get rattling and vibration, which translates into squeal. So this is what we want. This is on the right side of both of these caliper pieces on the cage, and these are in those holes right in there. So we did the passenger side already, the full brake change. The only thing different is the brake wear sensor, which is on the driver's side, and that's what we're going to show you right now. It's in here on the back of the caliper. you got to wiggle it and jiggle it until that comes loose. Okay, so unfortunately that wear sensor broke, uh, but good thing is we have a new one. Anyway, so what you have to do is the bleed nipple for the brakes, you have to undo the cap and expose the nipple here. We're not going to undo the nipple per se. We're just going to open the cap and pull this off. There we go. Let's put the cap back on for a second. Now we wheel this back. Now it's in this bracket, the next place. We want to pull that out. It's in there, okay. Now we work our way around. There's another bracket down here at the bottom behind the hub. We want to pull that out. There, we pop that out. Then what it does is it comes behind the arm we're gonna snake that through. And then it comes off of yet another bracket, which is right here, the base of the strut. And then it goes into the box and we have to open up this box. This is the junction box. Ooh, lots of dirt and debris in there. That's not good. Knock some of this dust and crap out of here. Now what we do is we take this slide it out because it's kind of got a slot a notch there and then we're going to undo that connector 
Okay, so we got that disconnected. What we'll do is we'll sleeve this behind here again. We have to take the actual sensor around the back door and we'll connect the connector here. And then we're gonna put it in here again so it's protected from the elements. Close the door, close sesame. And then we're gonna put this guy in here. There we go. And so we'll sleeve this around. Put that in there into that bracket. Okay, and then we're gonna snake this around over here. Drop it into there. Now I'm gonna leave this out for now until I swap, do the full brake swap, and then we'll connect the final dots. Okay, so you take the new sensor before you connect it back up to the nipple. We'll save that for the end. You wanna put this in here and it snaps right into place. Just like that. We'll pull the nipple off, the nipple cover. Don't unthread it, because again, we don't want to bleed the brakes unless they're spongy. If they're spongy, we'll bleed them. If they're fine, then we'll leave them. So we'll put that on, and then we'll put the cap back on. And that holds it all together. So none of this is complete until you've actually reset the coat. Now, one of two things, either A, you can go to the dealer, pay $200, $250, get gouged and be on your way, and they'll reset it with their little portable handheld, or you can do the little procedure I have here and I can actually reset the code right here on the dash. So you're gonna have to follow this procedure. Check it out. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So the first thing you gotta do, you turn that off. Okay, the car cannot be running. Turn it on, turn it on one more time. Now you've got your service lights over here. So the trick is, you'll notice the ignition is on. So the car's not running, as you can tell by the tack. However, the ignition is on its second position. So you have to be in this position. Then what you do is you use your odometer button here. So you press, press and hold. There you go, now you have that light, press it again and hold. Reset at the bottom, yes, press and hold. Bada boom, bada bing. Reset and you don't even have to pay those dealers. So I hope everybody enjoyed that little procedure because hey, instead of paying the dealer a hundred, two, three hundred dollars to reset your code, you can do it right here. That's right. So if you guys enjoyed the video and if you like my do-it-yourselfs, be sure to hit that link over there. That's going to take you to more great do-it-yourself videos on my channel. And be sure to subscribe as always. I'd really love to see you guys come back again. Hope to catch you then. Bye-bye.